So now the fun begins, because now what we're going to do is we're actually going to start determining how we actually ev evaluate and evoke our GraphQL. So the first thing we'll need to do is we're going to add a condition that says we have to have a request method of type post, and we're only looking at the GraphQL path. And this is something else that might be configured, and this is where we're going to have an advantage by using this custom extension method here. We'll be able to find an API so we can pass in options that'll get down to here without us having to write out the full middleware underlying pieces of this. So what we'll do next is come in here, and what we want to do is we want to deserialize the request body. So GraphQL will send up a, an entire object in the body that's just JSON. And so we need to serialize that and turn it into an object that we can work with. And so what we'll do is we'll come up to the top, and we're going to add a new class called GraphQL Request. And this is more straightforward than it really appears. All we're doing is we're adding a string of operation name, and this is because GraphQL lets you name your queries and mutations. And then we're taking in that query body and just storing that as a string. And then finally, we have our variables here. And what we're doing here is because there's a, there's a possibility that no variables will be sent up, and because of that, what we need to do is check and make sure that object isn't null. And so that's what we're doing here. Uh, when we set this, when it comes up from the server or we parse that HTTP request, we're going to save this. If we don't save anything, so then when we get it, it'll fall back over here with this null coalesce operator, and it'll say take the J object and make a new object from an empty object. And so that just avoids us having a null reference exception. So now we can go back down. And so we've deserialized this. We can add that deserialized method. Pretty straightforward. Uh, this request body is a stream. So we're going to take that stream. We're going to parse that into a JSON text reader. And then we'll take that and we can say we need a new, a new serializer. And we're going to deserialize that JSON reader stream. And so and that's going to deserialize into the object that we pass, which is that GraphQL request. So what we're going to do next is we're going to come in here and we're going to take that executor so this is our document executor, and we're going to define our few options that we need to actually have GraphQL evaluate our query. And so it's pretty easy here. We're going to specify our schema, and so this is the instance of iSchema that we defined, which in our case is Bicycle Shop Schema, which this is in our startup class. We're going to take that query that we parsed from our request body, along with the operation name, and here's where we have to avoid that null reference exception because we need to take our variables and GraphQL expects this J object to be in a special format called inputs. And so GraphQL has its extension method on J object and so we'll just utilize that. And so the next step is we're just going to come in and we're going to say that we want to tell our output type or our content type to be application JSON. And that way our parsers or any readers or clients that use this, they'll know what they're getting. And then we'll check. And so we're going to set our status code here. So if we have any errors, then we'll have a bad request. Bad request is HTTP status code that by definition says, don't make this request again. If I send you a 400, then you need to change your parameters before you try again. But otherwise, what we'll do is we'll return back a OK or a 200. And then the very last thing, we're going to take our document writer here, we're going to write out the result, and we're going to make that part of our response. And here's an important thing. Notice how when we were returning an error or a failure, we called next. What this does, it tells MVC that I'm done. I don't need to do anything. Hand it off to the next layer in the middleware stack. But because we've actually captured this as a graphical request, we don't want to hand this off. We want our middleware piece to be the last one in the stack. And so that's why when we come down here, we write out the response, but we don't call next. So we don't need to do very much more. The last few pieces are going to be registering our types. Because if we look, we're expecting to take in a type of iDocumentExecutor. We're expecting to type in iDocumentWriter. If you also notice, we're taking a type of T schema, which if we go and look at our graphical schema, you can see it takes an I dependency resolver, and it's also trying to resolve a query type. So we need to hop over into our startup class, and we need to define these. So let's start at the top here. 
So if we take a look at our bicycle schema, you can see we're taking in an I dependency resolver. And so to satisfy this, we'll come back over to our services and we're gonna register that we have a transient type of I dependency resolver. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an instance of our services provider and we'll pass this into a func dependency resolver. So what this will do, this, this func dependency resolver, as you can see, takes in a type, it's a, uh, if you look just below, it says it's, the parameter is a func type that returns an object as a resolver. And if you pay it, notice this get service has that same signature. So we're just delegating this constructor argument to use our service provider dot get service. And so whatever we have registered in these services will be available to us throughout our entire GraphQL schema and its, and its types. And so the next thing we'll look at is that we have a iDocument executor and an iDocument writer. Those can be resolved very simply. So we'll come in here and we'll register that we have an iDocument executor. This is a singleton registry. And so that means that it'll only have one instance in the lifetime of this application. And we'll do another one here for our iDocument writer. And the same thing, it's a singleton for document writer. The next thing we'll register here is our query type. We have to register that as well because if we go to our bicycle shop schema, you can see that we are resolving query type. And so that means that we need to be able to also register our shop schema. And so we'll do that one as well. And that's the last one. And so that covers everything that we need to actually have this GraphQL middleware begin to work. And if we scroll down and look, we've already gone ahead and told our application to use our GraphQL middleware.